Top K sampling is a technique used in LLMs to influence the text generation process. It basically works by focusing the model's attention on a limited set of the most probable continuations at each step. Now let me take you through the entire process of how top K sampling works. Let's consider an input phrase, the cat sat on the. If this is the input that I give to the large language model, I expect the LLM to generate the next word for me. Now what the LLM will do is the LLM will try to predict a bunch of possible words that follow the current sequence assigning a probability score to each word. So think of step 1 as probability distribution. So in our case given I have chosen a very small vocabulary which is consisting of 5 words that can follow this particular sequence. I have the words mat, table, chair, building and car. And every word has a corresponding probability associated with it. The maximum probability as you can see is associated with the word mat. Then you have a probability of 30% assigned to table and so on and so forth. So in step 2, the first thing that you have to do is you have to sort the entire probabilities in descending order which in our case was already done. Once you have a sorted list of probabilities and the labels, then you have to select the k value. In our case, let us select the k value to be equal to 3. So in our case, what will happen next is it will select the top 3 words that are present which is mat, table and chair. Now once you have this particular set of 3 words that you've selected based on the highest probabilities, the LLM picks the next word to add to the sequence by randomly choosing from only these top k most likely options. So out of the 3, it randomly picks the word mat. And this is how top k sampling works. Next up, we'll have a look at top p sampling, which is also known as nucleus sampling. It's basically a technique used in LLMs to control the randomness of the text that is generated. It works by setting a threshold for the cumulative probability of the next predicted words. Let's again start with the same input sentence, the cat sat on the. Now what is the next word that will be predicted based on top p sampling is what we'll have a look at. Step 1 is to look at the probability distribution. Imagine you have a corpus of 5 words that follow after this sequence that is mat, table, chair, building and car. This is the corresponding probability distribution. The next step is to sort and calculate the cumulative probability. So the table or the distribution is such that it's already sorted in a descending order. Now I have to calculate the cumulative probability. So the cumulative probability is as follows. 0 0.4, 0 0.7, 0 0.85, 0 0.95 and 1. Just to give you context for 0 0.85, the cumulative probability till table is 0 0.7. I add the probability of chair which is 0.15 and the overall cumulative probability till chair becomes 0.85. Now if I select the top p nucleus to be equal to 0.9. So given my 0.95 falls into the 0.9 range, I select the top 4 entries in case of top p sampling. If the nucleus value would have been 0.8 then I would have selected only the top 3 entries. Now given I have a nucleus which selects 4 entries, out of these 4 entries which is mat, table, chair and building, the LLM will choose one word randomly. In this case, it picked up table as a sampled word. Just for your reference, top P typically ranges from 0.9 to 0.95. A higher top P value closer to 1 allows for more randomness and exploration by the LLM considering a wider range of words. A lower top P value which is closer to 0 restricts the LLM to a smaller set of high probability words resulting in a more conservative and a predictable output. So you wouldn't have very creative outputs if your top P value is very low. Now if I have to compare between top P and top K sampling, let me start off with the main pointers of top P sampling. 
top p sampling dynamically adjusts the number of candidates based on the cumulative probability so it is not static in nature that i have to select only three candidates or four candidates it is free to choose as many candidates as it wants based on the threshold of the nucleus that we've kept it's better for diverse and creative outputs as i've already discussed a value higher in terms of top p like a 0.95 or a 0.9 will make the llm more creative as compared to a lower value of top p however if you want something that is very safe in nature in terms of what you want to generate and if you want less creativity in your output then here is where the advantages of top k sampling come in so it has fixed number of candidates based on the k value that you select so you can select a k value equal to 3 5 7 etc and it is more suited for deterministic outputs so if you want to write something that is very similar to what you have generated previously then you can set the top k value and you can keep the top p value less and top k value high so this is a small explanation of top p versus top k sampling in large language models thank you so much for watching this video